Hi guys, my name's Doug. Welcome to My Messy Garage. Today we're going to be making a gimbal mount bracket to fit onto my friend's 2016 Bearcat 7000 XT. Okay, so here we are. I got a uh, scrap of 8 inch aluminum, oh, 3.2 millimeter aluminum, that's left over from building airplanes and uh, playing on my CNC router. As you can see, I got some aborted cuts that didn't work so well. But we've got a decent enough piece of aluminum that we can get our bracket out of it. Check the back, make sure there's nothing messed up there. Kind of get it on here. I think we'll try and keep it as close to the edge as we can. That way it uh, makes it a little bit easier, a little less cutting. We'll just chase around it with a Sharpie. One of the advantages of using this thicker bond paper is that it kind of gives us a little bit of an edge on the sheet that we can follow with the marker. So there we go. That's the bracket. I will get it cut out. You don't want to listen to the bandsaw because it's kind of high pitch screechy. What I'm using to cut with here is actually a metal cutting bandsaw blade. It's well used. Definitely seen better days. Do you need a metal cutting bandsaw blade to cut aluminum? Absolutely not. Anything that will cut hardwood will cut aluminum. Router bits work very well cutting aluminum. This just happens to be what I have in the bandsaw, so that's what I'll use to cut this out with. There we are. Yeah, as you can see, we're kind of rough. We're outside of the line. The reason that I cut it outside of the line is so that we can file it down to the line and we should end up with a nice finished piece. Let me bring you over to the vise and we'll uh, start putting the file of this thing and we'll see what we can make it look like. Well, if there was ever any doubt that I had my uh, YouTube channel named properly, you can kind of see that it is. Of course, this is the worst corner of the of the garage at the moment but what we're going to do is take files starting with coarse and we are going to work our way down to fine the orange plastic blocks that you see in the vise are soft jaws that have magnets in them hold them on there to keep the jaws of the vise from chewing up the uh, the soft aluminum we're going to start off with a fairly coarse i guess we'd call this a bastard file and uh, then we'll work our way down to a finer file as we get closer to the line. Okay, we're getting down to the line there and we still have a little more to do here and a little more to do over here and then kind of put the nice gentle arc across the front of it. You'll notice that I'm trying to remember to only use the file in one direction. Files only cut in one direction. There are specialty files that will cut in two directions, but this is a standard file and it only cuts one way. Okay, that's good enough with the coarse file. Now we'll switch to a finer file, do a little bit of cleanup. And you see that I'm putting the file along this edge, along this edge, and then along the flat. And what that does is it rounds off the sharp edges. The closer you can put the side that you're filing to the jaws of the vise, the better. Uh, if it's sticking way up, it tends to vibrate and make a whole bunch of god-awful noises. There we go. Got the half round file. Go with the inside radius. The, uh, the inside radius is a little trickier to grind on or to file on than an outside radius. So you need something like a half round or a rat tail file to be able to get in there. So here we are, we've got our template and our piece of aluminum. Is it absolutely perfect? No, it's a little bit larger. But as long as the holes are in the right spot, being just a slight bit larger shouldn't make any difference. 
So we'll lay that down on the piece. Take our center punch. Line up as close as possible with the center of the hole and... Okay, now these are the oblong holes for the... Uh, that are in the bracket and we're just going to eyeball. There we are. Center punch holes. So now we need a drill. Okay, here's the drill. Eighth inch drill bit in it. That's a good eyelet uh, hole. Although if memory serves me correctly, this isn't a very good drill bit. But we'll see how it does. Um, normally I'd just drill into the countertop on my work table I would. But this is my uh, CNC table, so I don't really want to do that. Yeah, that didn't drill too bad. So here's the step drill I'm going to use. It's got nice thick uh, steps in it so that the uh, eighth inch aluminum ends up with a solid, solid diameter drill bit instead of being halfway between two steps. What I'm going to do is take the Sharpie marker and color the flutes that we need to get to. And that way, as the drill bit's going around, we should be able to see it and know when we've gone far enough. And we'll slow it down a little bit. Now I could drill these bigger, but I'm not sure what size fastener is going to be used to hold the gimbal on. I don't have that hardware here, so I'm going to hold off doing that. I'll see if I can find a, a nice big drill bit to deburr these holes. Here we go, we'll use this. This is designed for countersinking wood screws, but as I said, anything that will cut hardwood will cut aluminum, so... It does a nice job of cleaning up those large holes. And there we go, all deburred. Now we need to put a little bit of an angle on it. I'll bring it back and show it to you guys when I'm done. We're back in the back porch workshop where I've got a little bit better light. As you can see, we lay that on top. And this one's bent just a little bit tighter. Could use just a touch bit more clean up in the corner there. Not a big deal. What we're going to do is we're going to take this out, mount it on the snow machine, figure out what size hardware we need to mount that. And we will give this a scuff with some Scotch-Brite and probably throw a coat of paint on it just to make it a little bit tidier. But for the most part, the bracket is built. I will bring you guys back when I get to the point where we're uh, mounting the GPS on the snow machine and show you what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And for more great content from Doug's Massey Garage, select the video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching.